One of the most popular questions we get from students in this course is, what is the best beginner camera? Or what camera should I buy? And as much as we want you to understand that any camera is great, we do want to give you some more specific ideas to help. There are many factors when thinking about the best beginner camera. As a straight, quick answer, a small cropped sensor, DSLR, or a small mirrorless camera are going to be the best places to start for most people's budgets. Things to consider are how much do you think you'll be spending on lenses and growing as a photographer. If you are set on using your camera as a professional, investing in a DSLR or large mirrorless camera will be important for the long run. You'll be able to grow with the camera as you learn, and you won't be stilted by any other shortcomings of the camera. But if you don't have that kind of budget, starting with a cheaper DSLR or mirrorless and then upgrading the camera body later is probably your best bet. If you're not interested in professional photography and are more of a hobbyist, then a smaller mirrorless camera or even a point and shoot would be fine for just learning. When it comes to prices for the best entry level camera, any camera between $300 and $1,000 will be very similar in terms of quality of photo. In Canon's entry line, you'll see the Rebel series, such as the T3i, T4i, T5i, T6, or T7. These are the North American names for the series of cameras. Outside of the US, these might be called the 550D, the 650D, the 750D, etc. Nikon's entry level includes the D3300, the D3400, the D3500, the 5300, the 5500, the 5600, and more. Sony's A-Line is a good mirrorless beginner camera. This includes the A5000, A6000, 6300, and a lot more. Fuji's X-A3, X-T10, X-T20 are also great mirrorless beginning cameras. Panasonic Lumix makes the G7, G85, and the FS1000 all great entry-level mirrorless cameras. And the list could go on and will go on. Next year or next week for that matter, there could be additional models added to this list. So please take it to heart when we say that any camera between $300 and $1,000 is a great beginner camera. The higher the model number usually means the more options or increased quality. So if you can swing it, go ahead with the higher number. If you have a budget of higher than $1,000, you can start to look at a basic full-frame DSLR and semi-professional mirrorless camera. And each camera brand will have a camera in the next tier. But if you're wondering if we're going to tell you which brand and which model camera you should buy, unfortunately, we can't do that. We're each gonna tell you what camera is the best camera for us at the time and why we use it. My first digital camera was a Nikon D70. I remember at the time it was a big deal and I loved it. It was a wonderful beginner camera for me personally because I knew that I wanted to get into photography. I was also shooting for my school newspaper and it took the Nikon lenses that I had from my own film cameras from high school. So for me, a D70 Nikon at the time I think was around $1,000 was perfect. Now I'm a professional photographer and I use a Fuji X-T2. It's a mirrorless camera that has all the dials on the outside, which is great for a beginner. The smaller brother of the camera is the Fuji X-T20, almost half the price, contains the same sensor. Although it has a slower FPS and isn't water sealed, it's a great camera for beginners. The reasons I use the Fuji X-T2 now are because a lot of the accessories and the lenses are cheaper than the Nikons. It's also smaller for traveling, which I do a lot, and it's lighter in weight for traveling and for shooting uh, events and weddings. If I'm carrying around a camera for 10 hours a day, um, it feels much better to have one of these around my shoulder than to have a giant DSLR. My first digital camera was the Nikon D80, which was actually a hand-me-down from my father. Uh, I was getting into photography and doing a lot of video stuff, and he wanted to buy a new camera, so I was lucky enough to just take his camera, which also came with the 18 to 200 millimeter lens that I love learning how to use and, and shoot photos with. Uh, today, I shoot with a Sony a7R 3 which I just recently picked up actually. I'm still really putting it through its paces, but it's been a great camera for me so far. I really like the Sony line uh, because I do a lot of photo and video work. They're just really the best thing for me. For a long time though, I was shooting on the Nikon D800. This camera was tried and true for a very long time, uh, but I've since moved to the mirrorless system. My first digital camera was the Canon 7D, which was a great camera at the time because it had the video feature as well. And for me, that was something that was really important. I wanted a camera that can shoot both photos and video. So even though this is a photography class, these are the types of things you have to keep in mind when purchasing your camera. Do you want to be able to shoot video as well? 
different cameras will be able to do that at different qualities. So I really love that camera and used it a lot. And one of the things I'm excited to do in this class is actually have a real live sort of roundtable discussion about what my next camera purchase is going to be. I don't have one of the latest and greatest cameras like Will and Sam do, but I'm in the market for something that I can carry around more easily and that gets me excited to take photos every day. So later in the course, we're actually going to be having that kind of discussion walking through my entire process for deciding what camera I'm going to buy. So you can see how between the three of us, each camera is different for each person. We all have different needs and use it in a different way. So again, the camera's really specific to you and what you're gonna do with it.